A very warm welcome to the Briggs Automotive Company and Manhattan Motorcars press conference here at the New York Auto Show. My name is Stuart Newman, I'm the Press and Communications Officer for BAC. It's our first time here, coming all the way across the pond from Liverpool in the UK, and we're absolutely delighted to be launching our partnership with Manhattan Motorcars, which is our first representation on the East Coast of the USA. Alongside me, I have Neil Briggs, the co-founder and director of product development for BAC, and of course, the great Brian Miller from Manhattan Motorcars. Without further ado, it's my absolute pleasure to introduce, for the very first time in New York, the world's only single-seater road-legal supercar, the BAC Mono. We've had a lot of questions this week, asking all about the beautiful piece of machinery beside me, and tell you about it in more detail, plus the fascinating story of BAC, I hand you over to Neil Briggs. Yeah, thanks, and good morning, everybody. And um, firstly, let me just say, um, I'm absolutely delighted uh, to be here. I might not sound like it, sadly, I'm uh, suffering from a cold, but uh, yeah, good morning, and thanks, uh, th thanks for coming. Um, first time I came to New York uh, was uh, 20 years ago, and uh, as a, a young engineer, um, with dreams of, uh, of doing what we're doing here today, and uh, went to see the Blue Man show on Lafayette, and uh, never ever dreamed 20 years later would be stood here in front of you guys and stood next to this man here. So um, it's quite an emotional moment for us, um, and thanks again for coming. So let me tell you a bit about the car. Um, we started um, the process of, of, of the concept for this car actually nearly 20 years ago when there was a movement towards cars that are, are being produced and designed for one purpose and one purpose only. And we've taken that concept even further. So this car is not about A to B. It's about A to A, it's about pure, um, pure driving pleasure. Um, and that's its sole purpose, its sole, its sole identity. And so to, to, that, uh, to that extent, it was very important that the car had a new identity because it represents a new way forward in car design as far as we're concerned. And I think it's a movement that, that has been adopted by some of the other manufacturers. So firstly, when you look at the aesthetic of the car, you'll notice that the car uses a, a form language that we refer to as, as negative space. So the car is not a conventional three box volume. Uh, it, it creates its shape um, through surfaces and therefore this gives the car a, a feel of athleticism, of tautness. And it was very important that as a new product, it, was, it had a new identity. It didn't look like a race car, it didn't look like a, 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 a sports prototype, that it actually was a, a new identity. And that's why the car looks the way that it doesn't. And that's all down to uh, my brother Ian, and his design team, he's the co-founder of the business. And my job as an engineer uh, is to make the car drive as well as it looks. And uh, to that extent, this car, as a driving experience, it's unparalleled. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit later about, about some of the stats on the car. But it is, um, it's my job to make sure that the car drives as well as it looks, but also to make sure that the, the, the performance that the car has is very, very accessible for anyone in this building. Anyone can drive this car. Um, and, and, and to that extent, uh, we're in the business of entertainment, we're not in the car business, we're in the business of entertainment, we want to put smiles on people's faces, and it's so rewarding for me, um, as an engineer, to meet new people who share our passion for driving, and when they get out of the car to see the look on their face, which is usually a big, big smile, and then greeted with a big hug afterwards. Tell us about the start of the business, so you and your brother had a vision of creating something that didn't exist in the market, tell us what the full process there. Yeah, so Ian and I have, have had a, an automotive design uh, business, uh, consultancy business for 25 years, working with pretty much um, all the major manufacturers. So we, we had the, the skill set to design our own car. And, and for us, it was how would life look if we, if we wrote the design brief? Um, and that's why the car has this, this unique look, uh, but it also has this unique layout. Um, you'll notice the car has one seat. And the reason behind is, is unquestionably and, and undeniably um, race cars have evolved over 60 70 years and you'll notice that the driver sits in the middle that they have a stress bearing longitudinal engine and a fully stress bearing uh, uh, transmission and gearbox all of the um, the architecture of the car is done to uh, to optimize the weight distribution and maximize the performance so there was never ever any discussion whether the car should have two seats whether it should have one in line or a tandem or three seats it was always always a single seat and um, in most car companies, designers and engineers usually, usually have a conflicts um, because engineers want things certain ways and designers want them another way. And I have to say, um, it's not just because of the fantastic relationship I have with my brother, but it's also 
Uh, the engineering elements on this car are also part of the aesthetic. So in, in many ways, the car is very similar to, to a motorcycle in that in sense. Um, you'll see a lot of exposed mechanical components on the car. And as the further as you get back on the car, you'll see that more of those mechanical elements are exposed. If you do get a chance, please come and see. Um, you'll notice the gearbox, you'll see the, the exhaust, you'll see the rock as the suspension. Uh, there's a real beauty in the engineering. And really our vision was, uh, was to create something that, 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 that was an unparalleled driving uh, experience. And, and we've done that. Brian, you've worked with some of the biggest names and the biggest brands in the automotive industry. You only have to look around the stand today to know that. What was it about BAC and, of course, the mono that really caught your eye? Well, yeah. hello, hello. When I first Thanks. Uh, anyway, when I first started getting into these type of cars, I was more of a conventional uh, auto dealer. Um, I got unique kind of cars for, for unique people, the people we deal with on a regular basis, and this car fit in perfectly. Uh, I met the BAC guys. You got to love these guys. They're really passionate about what they do. The car is amazing. I didn't get to see one in person until this one rolled in here for the show, and uh, it looks so much better than I even expected. So we have people who want unique products and different things. I think they share the same passion that Neil has tapped into with his, uh, t with his team. And the car just fit well with us, and we're excited to be selling it now and to be involved with the BAC guys. So everything about the mono is tweaked with ultimate performance and driving perfection in mind. It's regarded as the ultimate piece of sporting equipment for the sport of driving. Neil, the statistics on this car are absolutely phenomenal. Tell us a bit more about that and, of course, the scouts it's taken on the track around the world. So the car is, um, is the fastest rear-wheel drive accelerating car in the world. It will get from 0 to 60 in 2.7 seconds. Um, it will get to 100 in under 6 seconds uh, and top speed of 170 miles an hour. So they're fairly earth-shattering um, performance details. But I think the, the bigger picture really is, is when you put all of that together, um, how accessible the performance is, the braking performance, the handling, the way the car steers, turns, the apex speeds that you can carry into corners, and so on. When you put all of that together, um, it delivers really um, a lap time that is unparalleled for any production car. In fact, the car holds um, seven production car lap records at various international uh, Formula One circuits around the world. Um, and, and for us to be rubbing shoulders, A, in this company is, is, is super flattering for us, but also to be able to, to demonstrate something that our business can deliver, which other manufacturers can't, because um, we're a small, agile business. We can, we can develop based on the customer feedback that we get. Many of the options that you see on the car are a, a direct consequence of some of the, the feedback that we've had from customers. Um, and for me as an engineer, the ultimate, the ultimate check as to whether I've done my job or not properly and my team is a lap time. Uh, because basically you put all of those performance attributes together, aerodynamics, braking performance and so on and so forth, and, and it delivers a lap time. And uh, there's, there's various tracks that we can talk about around the world, um, but to be four, five, six, seven, eight seconds quicker than, than, than the, the best supercars in the world around some of the tracks, um, in, in motorsport terms, you know, you're chasing tenths of a second, and for us to be three, four, five seconds quicker than, than cars like McLaren P1s, um, Porsche 918s, um, all the hypercars that you can think of in the world, it really is it really is extremely flattering for us, and it shows that we've done our job. And I think, uh, you know, the, the idea of a supercar um, for us is that a supercar has to be super at something. Uh, and we've chosen the battle uh, that we, we'd like to go into with the other manufacturers and that's a lap time. So we're not chasing top speed, we're not chasing um, a certain amount of performance or anything else. For us it's how does the car drive because that's what this car is all about, it's what all our brand is about and it's about, as Stuart said, the, uh, the sport of driving. We consider driving to be a sport. Um, our customers are, are cash rich and time poor and for them they want to maximise their pleasure when they, when they do have the chance to drive their car on the road because this car is road legal or on the track. Um, and uh, it really is something to be, uh, it's something to be experienced if you ever get that chance. And this man will help you achieve your, get that experience as well. Come on down. <laughs> Obviously, being in New York is a huge step for us and we're very, very proud and happy to be here. And first of all, Brian, what are you expecting from the market now you have Mono in the dealership? Well, I think it brings us um, some different buyers. Uh, the mono is priced really well for what it gives you, and I think there's a lot of value in the car for that. 
So I'm expecting uh, to meet some new people who want to just have, like Neil said, just get in the car and run around and then go fast and have fun with the car. There's still a lot of people who do want to do that, believe it or not. Um, and uh, this car, like I said, I mean, I, I can't wait to drive it. I'm just afraid about getting out of it somehow, but uh, um, so that's it. Thanks. And Neil, I think it's safe to say this is the start of big things for us over in the USA. Beyond this week, what are our plans? So the U.S. is um, is our number one market. It's uh, we're absolutely committed to the U.S. and um, I just want to take this opportunity to to thank Brian and his team for uh, their vision and believing in us um, and allowing us to, to live our dream and allowing us to try and deliver dreams for for his customers. Um, business is all about people, and uh, for us, um, you know, these guys are, are are great fun people to be with. They're very professional, of course. Uh, we don't take ourselves too seriously, but. Uh, but when, uh, when the discussion over price and availability, then we're very serious. Um, so um, yeah, I'd like to thank Brian and his team for believing in us and, 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 and putting on such a great show. And uh, for those of you who are fortunate to come tonight, then uh, I've, I've heard it's legendary at the evening and at the booth. Um, as far as the US is concerned, as I said, we're, we're absolutely committed uh, to the US market. And uh, I think with, with, uh, with Brian, we've got the East Coast absolutely uh, wrapped up. Um, you can expect to see uh, one or two other announcements in the next, uh, in the next three months. Uh, with regards to uh, one or two other people popping up uh, over the US. It's a big place as we're, we're, we're beginning to understand. Uh, <clears throat> but we don't need any invite to come over here. It's a fantastic place, an amazing city, an amazing country. And uh, we started off this company to meet interesting uh, new people who shared our passion and our dream. And every day uh, we do that when we, we meet new people. So, uh, so that's, that, that's what you can expect in the next, the next few months. We're often asked what kind of person would buy the mono and uh, to tell you more about that, I'll hand you back to them. So the person who buys the car um, has, a, has a, a multitude of cars. They don't buy the car um, in addition, uh, sorry, instead of any other car, they buy it in addition to. So uh, the usual questions are warrior competitors and, and so on and so forth. And actually the car is probably um, other competitors, I would say would be certainly in the luxury lifestyle business would be expensive watches or racehorses or anything that you care to, to spend your money on. There's no, there's no reason why you can, it's a discretionary purchase, you can justify this car, but you want the car because it's such a, an incredible and lovely thing. And so to that extent, our customers are very focused on their, on their free time, they're very focused on their driving. Uh, they all share a passion for, uh, for beautifully engineered product. Um, they'll have multiple cars in the garage, many of which are, are on the stand here. We share many similar customers um, with the various different brands here. And they buy this car for one reason and one reason only, and that's because it gives them something different from all of their other vehicles. Sitting in the middle, being exposed, living the dream, um, dreaming of, of, of who they might have been if they'd have uh, started motorsport maybe earlier. Um, but enjoying the car on a nice canyon, on a nice mountain road, and even driving it through the city. Um, they love to be part of that uh, part of that process and, uh, and being at one with the machine and, and, and that effectively is uh, is the kind of person who, who buys the car and there's as we're discovering there's uh, there's quite a few of them around the world and the more people who get to know about the car um, the more people who are attracted to the brand and uh, and that's super flattering for us and it's nice to know that there's many people out there who share our dream guys thank you all so much for coming if you'd like some one-on-one -on -one time with neil come and speak to me afterwards Neil will also be appearing in the uh, Hypercar CEO Summit with Koenigsegg and Remac. That's at 11.40 right here. And thank you very much for coming. The price uh, starts from $235,000 in the US. It's 580 kilograms, which is roughly 1,200 pounds, uh, which all, all equates to a power to weight ratio of 525 brake horsepower per tonne, which is a lot. I'll let you ask Neil this. <laughs> maybe, I'll, maybe I'll just shoot a load of details out and hopefully it'll cover a lot of the, uh, cover a lot of the questions. The, um, the engine is a 2.5 normally aspirated four-cylinder engine. It has uh, 305 horsepower, 310 newton meters of torque. Um, Stuart can provide you with a complete press pack of details if you need all of this, so you don't have to write too feverishly. Um, it runs a, uh, runs a dry sump, um, which allows us to uh, stress the, the elements in the engine are much more um, higher to achieve those power outputs. It has a, a bespoke design dry sump. It means we can position the engine super low in the car uh, for center of gravity and, and weight distribution benefits, obviously. The whole of the intake system is bespoke, as is the exhaust system. Uh, it runs a drive-by wire um, 
throttle system which opens up some electronic goodies in the car so we have a six-way traction control system uh, we also have a, a launch control which is which can be set manually so that the customer can decide if he wants to smoke the tires at 8,000 rpm away or whether he wants to pull away at 3,000 whatever he can set that manually uh, there's also an auto auto up shift feature on the on the car as well so the car will will um, will automatically change gear when the car hits the red line that's pretty sorry the transmission it's a six-speed sequential gearbox um, from our partner Hewland um, again it's, it's bespoke for us it's based on a unit that uh, has been used in motorsport for many years in, in the world of Formula 3 and sports car racing um, the gear ratios are, are completely bespoke so you can change the gear ratios um, <coughs> excuse me um, and bespoke the ratios for any particular track whether that's Laguna Seca or Monticello, Silverstone, uh, wherever um, and it runs a limited slip differential um, it's operated by paddles on the steering wheel so it is a manual gearbox so there's three pedals clutch brake and, and throttle um, and with the use of the paddles it allows the driver to maintain both hands on the steering wheel at all times so he can focus on, on where he needs to position the car and what he needs to do um, and it changes gear in 45 milliseconds which is twice as fast as you can blink so it's almost a seamless um, a seamless gearbox but not quite the, be the main benefit of the of the gearbox is it's a single clutch and it's a dog box um, so it's a sequential gearbox uh, with straight cut gears um, and that means that the frictional losses through the gearbox are much lower than you would associate with a normal gearbox and it weighs around 38 kilos so it's 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 super light it's very good at what it does the car has a uh, an aero uh, deflector on the front there and that's designed to, uh, to, to to push the airflow over the driver's head um, driving the car on the road is not a legal requirement to use a helmet um, some people including myself and customers use sunglasses to just drive the car conventionally on the road as you would with any cabriolet car um, but it, helmets aren't mandatory to drive no on the road it's it's <clears throat> helmets only mandatory on the racetrack but of course it is advisable to wear a helmet um, but it's not a mandatory requirement So the engine is produced um, in California um, by our partner Mountain, and it's completely bespoke for ourselves. Um, it's a 2.5 litre four cylinder, normally aspirated engine, and it has uh, 305 horsepower, 310 newton meters. Um, it uses uh, variable valve timing, um, so it has a lot of mid-range torque, which means the engine is very tractable. Uh, great headline figures, of course, but it's also very drivable and tractable at low speed. So um, the car can be driven like any conventional car at any speed in any situation around town, around the city, uh, around uh, around the countryside, mountain roads, etc. No, the engine is um, the engine has a specific um, power output of 121 brake horsepower per liter. Um, the only car on the planet that has a higher number than that is the Ferrari 812 Superfast, which has 122 brake horsepower per litre. So as you can imagine, we're pushing the boundaries of, uh, of what you can do with a normally aspirated engine. Um, and so to answer your question, um, there's one standard uh, power um, output from the engine. But the way that we achieve increased performance is to reduce the weight of the car so that the power to weight ratio is therefore uh, increased. So therefore, there's quite a few... Um, lightweight bespoke options that you can put on the car so therefore the power to weight ratio is uh, is improved so for for example um this car is fitted with the optional um carbon ceramic brakes they save 2.55 kilos per corner of rotational unsprung mass um and then you'll also notice this is a world first which is with our our, uh, our, our partner dimag um this is a what we call our carbon hybrid wheel um so the wheel rim um we all remember I equals MR squared from, uh, from our physics lessons, I'm sure. Um, so the best place to save weight is actually at the rim itself, because it's the power two. Um, so the, the, um, the rim is made of carbon. The uh, carbon isn't that great in bending. So um, what we use uh, for the spokes is billet, billet from solid aluminium. And then there's a patented system by how these two elements are held together with titanium bolts and then titanium wheel bolts. So that entire package saves five kilos over the standard alloy wheel and steel rotor package that's 20 kilos on a car that weighs 580 kilos so that's a serious amount of weight save we also have a uh, <clears throat> excuse me we also have a, a lightweight exhaust system which is made from stainless steel 
in canal if you've heard of that material <clears throat> and titanium but the standard uh, the standard system is is a 301 stainless steel exhaust system and it's ceramic coated so my name is uh, my name is Neil Briggs and uh, I'm the co N E I -L -L, and uh, I'm the co-founder of the business with my brother Ian um, I don't know if he's watching live on Instagram it is actually his birthday today so so if we all sing for Ian that would be great happy birthday to Ian happy birthday to Ian Happy birthday, dear Ian. Happy birthday to you. There we go.